Hi, I'm Maria Thea Harris or Velo Sews. Welcome back to Sew Over 50 podcast on Sew Organized Style. Stay listening. Sew Organized Style podcast acknowledges traditional owners of country throughout Australia. We pay our respects to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures and to the elders past, present and emerging. Today we've got Nancy Chen Bayraktari on the podcast because she was part of the pattern mixing challenge and her entry that was featured by Sober 50 was quite impressive. So thank you, Nancy, for coming onto the podcast. Thank you for having me, Maria. Really happy to be here. I'm really glad that you could make the time today. And I think you're the first guest we've had from Hawaii. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah, I've seen, I've uh, online friended some other sewists in Hawaii, but actually I only know of one other one who's very active, you know, in Oahu who makes patterns, but the other ones I've met are on Maui or Kauai, so no real life get togethers. Yet. Yet. Where can we find you on social media? I am on Instagram. My sewing account is at I used to be a curtain because I started out planning to do a lot of upcycling. I still am doing a lot of upcycling, although, you know, it's split between that and using new fabric. I'm on Facebook, but I don't post any sewing stuff on Facebook. How did you start your upcycling journey? Interesting question. So I've always hated waste. I've always tried to repurpose and reuse stuff. My husband does woodworking and he would find scraps of wood pallets and stuff like that on the side of the road. It's just something that we've gotten used to doing. Like, what can I do with this? What can I make this into? So when I started sewing, it was, I had a young kid at the time. Well, I mean, I still have a young kid, but you know, I didn't have time to go to fabric stores and stuff. So it was like, well, I have this sheet. It's an extra sheet. We don't use it. What can I do with it? Or just whatever fabric was available. So that's just how it started. So have you also repurposed things like bath towels, et cetera? Towels, towels, no, but I did also sometimes, you know, living in New York City, which is where I lived before I moved here, Mm -hmm. there are more thrift shops available than fabric stores, I would say. So sometimes I could also pop into a thrift shop and get some things like if I needed purple jersey to make something. I would go and, you know, just grab a bunch of purple t-shirts and that was easier than going to the fabric store. So a lot of thrifted goods, not something so thick as towels, but more sheets and clothes that I could turn into other clothes. That's really good to hear that at least you had great sources for upcycling clothing. Yeah, definitely. So you've mentioned sewing. Is that your main craft? I guess, I don't know if this counts as a craft, but I've been into photography for a very long time. I also worked as a photographer for a while while I was trying to figure out what I want to do with my life between a failed educational endeavor and my next educational endeavor. But yeah, so I worked as a photographer for a while. So that's also part of, you know, what I think is really fun about Instagram, you know, making the nice photos, presenting things well. Yeah, so that's my other main craft, I would say. In work, I am a prosthetist orthotist. So I fit people with prosthetic limbs and body bracing, neck braces, you know, everything in between except for teeth. And that's actually how I learned how to sew. And a lot of times people need belts and straps to hold their prosthetics or braces on. So I was sewing that for a long time before I ever started sewing clothes. And that's also very crafty. You're always trying to, you know, put a little pad here, put a little pad there, make people feel a little more comfortable. So that's kind of a craft, although that's my profession. I think that's really great that you were using your skill in creating to help people not be in pain, you know, live a a less uncomfortable life. Yeah, it's a super satisfying job for sure. The reason you're here is because of your pattern mixing Your pattern mixing, it was a dress, wasn't it? I guess you could call it an entry because there were no winners. That's right. There weren't. (laughs) And I'm not great at pattern mixing. So can you describe to us, we'll have the photo of your entry on the blog post. So can you describe to us 
what it was that you made and how you went about it. I made a dress. It's not super fitted. So it's, you know, I guess you would call it a shift dress that had a wide V-neck band with notches in it. And it started out as a piece of one meter piece of Lady McElroy fabric that I had that I was, that was kind of sitting around for a long time. And I didn't really know what to do with it, although I loved it. And I was at a thrift store one day. I mean, this is an awesome thrift store where stuff is $1. Garments are $1. So I found this men's shirt for a dollar and I just really liked the print on it. And I figured, you know, I can use this for something. I don't think I'll make a whole garment out of it, but it would be a really great accent on something. So I took it home and I'm kind of holding it up to, you know, various fabrics in my stash. And it just, they like married each other, you know, it was just instantly perfect. And I had my eye on a certain pattern. So I used the gray shirt that I found fabric from it to make the neckline, which is a wide band. And I also used it for like these cap sleeve type things in the dress. And then I used the rest of the Lady McElroy fabric for the body of the dress. And I think it turned out really nicely. Did you feel happy when you had finished it? Oh, super happy. Yeah. I am very bad at picturing things in my mind. So I kind of have to like do it over and over and over again to try to get an idea of whether things will look good in the end. And yet I can never truly picture it. Some people are very good at it, but I can't. I kept trying to picture it and I was like, I think it's going to be good. I think these fabrics look good together. And in the end, it actually didn't really look like what I thought it would look like, but I was super happy about it. Yeah. I think the good thing that you've told us about is that you held the Lady McElroy fabric up with the shirt. No, the sh- you held the shirt against all your fabrics and you found what married really well pretty much straight away. You could see it. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was serendipity. Now, I'm not really great at pattern mixing. What advice would you give me or our listeners who would really like to get better at pattern mixing that you've just told us about? First of all, you should just go for it, I think. You should try. The suggestions that I'm going to give are just my suggestions. I'm sure there are many, many approaches to it. I kind of think about it kind of like color blocking. Like if you start out with a print that you want to match up to something, I mean, first think maybe what color might complement this print really well. And you could pair it up with a solid, you know, that works really well. I see it all the time. I've done it and it works really well. But you could also then take that solid color and try to find another print that's mostly that color. So you're trying to match it up with something that is complementary, but just a little more exciting because it's a print. So that's one good way, I think, to start to approach it. Mm -hmm. There's other things you can pay attention to, like playing with scale. You know, my Lady McElroy fabric is a very large print scale. It has big birds and different elements on it. But the gray fabric that I use from the shirt is a very small print. So that kind of balances it out. If you have two very large scale prints, they might fight with each other for attention. Or if you use two very small scale prints, it just might end up looking way too busy. So you kind of want to balance it out optically. And another way you could pattern mix is getting two different colorways of the same print. A lot of times fabric designers offer different colorways of the same print. And if you just put those together, sometimes it's a, it's a very interesting and very pleasing natural kind of effect. I think um, people who do quilting have that skill set, whereas I don't do quilting. So I'd be looking at those examples to figure out if colorways actually work for me. Yeah, actually, yeah. Now that you've brought that up, maybe I should look at quilting websites for more advice. I never even thought of that about that, actually. That's how I see a lot of print matching happening. So uh, that only just came to mind. So I think we'll both be looking at some quilting <laughs> Instagram accounts. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a really great idea. Because whenever I used to Google print mixing or pattern mixing, I would come up with a lot of home decor stuff. And I think somehow that is not completely applicable. 
there's stuff you can do in home decor that just doesn't look good in a garment. Mm. So yeah, the quilting might have more that translates. Yeah. So Nancy, would it also be a possibility to use prints in another way? Sure, definitely. If you are looking for a complementary fabric or print for a material, instead of finding a complementary color, you could use a neutral. I have found that like a maybe something with mostly white with like a black or some other kind of not super conspicuous print on it or gray, or if you're into the beige color family, that it could be an easy match for your print. And another thing I would like to say is that I have a lot of fabrics that I don't think I'll ever find a mate for. So I don't think you could just take any fabric and just automatically expect to find a mate. If you are not having success, you're not failing. It might not be meant to be. It might be a print that really just might need to live by itself. So it would be like the hero of the garment. Right. Yeah. I've, I've had fabrics that I couldn't find a mate for and I just buy, you know, a little extra of that fabric so I can make the whole garment out of the fabric. I tend to be kind of cheap and that's why I end up doing a lot of pattern mixing because I buy like one yard and then I need just a little more to finish the garment. But sometimes it's just not going to happen and I'm just going to make the whole garment out of that fabric, which is great too. And look, at the end of the day, each one of us only has a limited budget to spend on sewing. So if you can find ways to mix prints in the way that you've suggested, that helps us get through and finish a garment the way we would like to finish it rather than thinking, oh, maybe I should have if I had more money. Da, da, da. Well, no, you use what you've got. Exactly. And that's why I started print mixing pretty much. Either I had been too cheap to buy more <laughs> of the main fabric, which is, you know, some beautiful fabric. I mean, I've spent more than I'd like to admit on some pieces of fabric, like half a yard I bought because it was like $40 a yard, I mean, US dollars. Yeah. Or I'm upcycling a garment and I have li- a limited amount of material. I'm never going to find more of that material. So I'll have to find something to complement it. Okay. You know, if I'm trying to print mix, is there anything that I should be careful of? Yeah, definitely. I, well, this scale. And then also matching up weights and drapes of fabric. I had a pattern mixing fail quite early on because I had tried to pair like a cotton voil, which, you know, has a little bit of stiffness to it with like a a rayon chalice. And the chalice just brought everything down and it just looked like a wilted flower. It was just, it, it, yeah, it was, it was terrible. I actually posted that picture just (laughs) to see if anybody could help me with any advice. Actually, Uh, there were a lot of different opinions, which, you know, was fun to hear what people had to say, but yeah. So you want to most likely pair things with similar drapes and similar weights. Okay. And the other thing would be just to be careful of how busy your print is. If your print is super busy, you don't want to pair it. Most likely don't want to pair it with something that's equally busy because that's just going to, you know, overwhelm and there needs to be a little bit of a balance. So it just, so it doesn't overwhelm. That's good advice. So when your print mixing entry was featured on sale over 50, were you surprised? I was. Well, I didn't know if they would be featuring anybody who wasn't over 50 because I didn't think I had seen that yet. Yep. So it was exciting. And I know they have a really wide viewership. And a lot of the people that I follow are over 50 that are in the group. It was exciting. And, you know, a lot of them kind of virtually high fived me. And (laughs) it was fun. It was really fun. Super fun challenge. And are you doing any other challenges I don't think so, but there was a, another challenge that just ended and they announced that I had won it. It was uh, congratulations. Thanks. I was also shocked. It's really, really fun to be participating in these and just see all the takes that people have when you give them a cue, you know, all the different things that people come up with. That's what I love about sewing. You know, everyone has a different approach and 
it's really amazing. And, and, you know, you see like all the quote rules that I have given, every rule can be broken and successfully. And you see stuff that, you know, you never would have thought would work, but it looks amazing. It's exciting about sewing. You'll, you just never see the same thing twice, pretty much. You're right. Yep. Being featured in the Cyber 50 challenge and not being 50, did that matter to you? That didn't. Although, you know, of course, on their page, I would love to mostly or, you know, 95% of the time like to be seeing people who are over 50 because that's what the group's about. I don't want it be, to be taken over by younger people. It was surprising, but there's nothing unusual about it or anything to me. Yeah, it's a good reflection that a group that is trying to raise the visibility of sewers over the age of 50 are inclusive for all ages when it comes down to it. Yeah, absolutely. And the challenge, just this challenge in particular was for all ages, which I was happy about. So yeah, I was, I was happy to be featured. I I agree that, you know, I would like to see people over 50 on that page more often than not. Well, Nancy, thank you for coming on to Sell Organized Style podcast for Server 50. Thank you so much, Maria. It's been great talking to you. Same here. And have a lovely day, listeners. This episode of So Organised Style Podcast for Sober 50 was produced by me, Maria Theoharis, with permission of Nancy Chen Bayraktari, sound by bensound.com. You can subscribe to So Organised Style Podcast, but with an S, not a Z, on all good podcast apps and give us a five star rating and review. Make sure you listen to over 50 Sober 50 podcasts that we've now published. Post any questions or suggestions you have on our Instagram account at Soul Organized Style or on our website at www.soulorganizedstylepodcast.com or on our Facebook page. We look forward to joining you in your sewing room next time. Stay safe, everyone. <laughs>